Hey gang, Evan Sutton here. I'm the senior sound design instructor here at DubSpot in New York City and online. Today we're going to be talking about Guitar Rig and Ableton Live and Ableton Live interacting with Guitar Rig and all of those things interacting with our sounds in a performance setting. We're going to be reaching out and we're going to be touching someone today. So get ready. Let's move on this. Okay, so I've got my track set up here and I've got Guitar Rig in here. Let's go ahead and turn off Guitar Rig for a moment. Let's go ahead and just listen to this. This is a little ditty I threw together. All right, so that's just a, a little beat that I threw together. I like to call it good and ready. I'm going to grab Guitar Rig 5 Effects. That's the one that you want. We'll go ahead and jump on in here. And right now we have an empty rack. We have some presets. We've got some components. And we've got some options. All right. Now, if you're not familiar with Guitar Rig, I suggest that you check out my man Matt Saletti's tutorial on Guitar Rig. You can find it on the DubSpot YouTube channel. It's really going to get you familiarized with containers and with Guitar Rig as a whole. And he does a great job of explaining that. He's also a sound design instructor like myself. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a very specific effect here. It's going to be a bit crusher, which is a distortion with a little bit of a high pass filter coming in to really add to the destruction and add to the uh, suspense here. And then uh, we're actually going to make it so that these things work really nicely with an Ableton Live effects rack to make it really perfect for performance and for uh, touching with your MIDI controller. So I'm going to go over to components here and we're going to start out in tools. All right, we have all of these different categories of products and I'm going to drop the container in. Now, one of the first things you want to do if you if you listen to this right now, you can hear it's a little it's a little funny. That's because the right channel isn't turned on. There we go. We're all lit up now. I like that a lot. And you can go ahead and you can just make sure that the input gain is at a place where it's not going to be clipping. Depends on what you're working with. This is unmastered material, so it might jump out from time to time. But you know, you you don't want to clip. It's not good. So uh, you turn on the, both the left and the right channels. That's important because Guitar Rig was originally conceived for guitars, which is a mono signal. So usually they'll just give you one channel. Turn them both on. You'll hear your whole song. This is the container. It's a lot like a combinator in Reason. We can drop modules into the container. And then we have these big macro knobs here to control multiple parameters in different ways. So the first thing we're going to add is a distortion. Now, if you're familiar with Tractor, if you're a DJ, or you want to be a DJ, or you're dating a DJ, you may know know of the tractor effects here and we actually have access to those in guitar rig on top of having lots of great emulations of classic equipment guitar rig will actually include the effects from tractor lots of nice performance stuff so today we're going to work with the digital lo-fi i love the way this effect sounds it sounds great for performance it's nice and creamy it, it fits great over over uh, large amounts of instruments like whole tracks as this track is so let's listen to the bit crush as i turn the bit crush up we'll get bit crush distortion as i turn the sample rate up We'll get sample rate distortion. Now, remember though that as I turn this up, it's actually reducing the bit rate. And as I turn this one up, it's actually reducing the sample rate. That's just a little fun fact and something that you should remember because you're going to see uh, bit crushers and other native instrument stuff. And it's actually oriented the right way. But you know, I'm DJing, I'm, uh, I'm drinking my drink, I'm saying hi to all my friends. I don't want to think about turning it down to get more distortion. I want to turn it up to get more distortion. So that makes sense to me. I like that. So let's take a listen. Here's the bit crush. All right, total destruction. We can smooth it over a little bit or unsmooth it. Here's the sample rate reduction. And then the spread is gonna make it a stereo effect. So it sounds really good. Now, we got that. I like that very much. Now, let's go ahead and add our filter. I'm going to go ahead and drop in the Pro Filter over here. And the Pro Filter is actually left over from a native instrument software instrument that no longer exists or was discontinued. It exists on my computer and at my house. So that's just how stuck in time I am. I really like this effect. This is left over from the Pro 53, which was the native instruments emulation of the Prophet 5. And the Prophet 5 had these really cool sounding Curtis filters. This is the emulation of it. Even though the uh, software instrument is discontinued, they still include this great filter in guitar rig, reactor, things like that. So I'm going to switch it to high pass mode here. That means that as I turn the cutoff frequency up, it's going to pull off low end. And I'm going to change the slope so that it's a little bit more of a severe cutoff. Let's take a listen. 
Uh oh. All right, so we can still hear it a little bit when uh, the cutoff is already down. That's okay, see how it's at 50 hertz? It's still cutting off some of the low lows, especially on that big sub that I have. I'll even turn down the input gain just a little bit more. With the resonance, we'll tend to get a little bit of spill. Um, so, now, I have both of these. I wanna add a control so that when I uh, bring up the cutoff, the bit rate and the uh, sample rate crushers come up as well, maybe a little resonance. Let's just take this control, we'll drag and drop it. It's going to control all these things just by dragging and dropping. Cut off and resonance as well. So now as I turn this up and down, we're going to hear all of these things and see them move. Okay, that's pretty good. I like that a lot, but let's just customize these controllers a little bit. I'm going to open this up here. We can see we have different ranges for all of these different controllers. So I'm going to make it so that the uh, cutoff frequency isn't going to go super crazy high, super fast, and the resonance isn't going to go super crazy high really fast. We're not just going to leave the resonance up, and here's why. It's because, you know, the resonant bump is going to add a little bit of gain to the range surrounding the cutoff frequency. So if we're coming up on a high pass, we could really bump up the bass a little bit too much and kind of blow people away in the club if there are some subs or something like that. So I like the resonance to come up gradually so that it's only really apparent once we get a little higher. I also don't want the sample rate coming up so quickly. Okay, so let's take a listen to this. All right, that's pretty good. Let's have the frequency come up a little slow. Maybe a little bit faster than that, but I think that's pretty good. All right, I like that very much. Now, we've got our effect working great inside of here. You can set up a million other things with just about as many controls as you want. You see, you can add controls, you can delete controls, you can do what you want. I'm gonna go ahead and close this thing down for now. I'm just gonna close it like that, we'll leave that there. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna take this guy and I'm gonna drop it into an effects rack, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and grab an Ableton Live effects rack. Let's go up here. La da da, audio effects rack right there. And we're just gonna drop this audio effect into here, okay? But Evan, why are we gonna do that? Well, because it'll make MIDI learning much easier. We can use Ableton Live's MIDI Learn through this guy very, very easily. But also, we're gonna set up a little trick so that the whole thing turns off when I, when I turn the knob all the way down, okay? So I'm gonna open up the macro thing, and we have all our macros here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just configure this thing. I'm gonna click Configure, and this is basically telling Ableton Live, hey, look, I think I'm gonna wanna touch this one. You just click Configure, move the controller. There you go. That's it. You close it back up. You don't even have to look at Guitar Rig anymore, okay? So, you might need the knob though. <laughs> you will need the knob. So I'm gonna hit map mode, and what I'm gonna do here is just click on that knob, and I'm gonna click on the macro knob I wanna map it to, hit map, boom, there we go. Now I can go ahead and I can rename this, command R, I'm gonna say HP crush, that means I have a crush, an HP crush on you, and you can see as I turn this up, it's gonna do that. Let's take a look. Okay, so that's awesome. I'm really enjoying that. I can go ahead and MIDI learn this to my controller, which is gonna make it lots and lots of fun. Okay, that's great, but we can still hear that when this is off, we're still getting a little bit of high passing, and frankly, I don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna also map this knob to the on-off switch for this guitar rig effect in total, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit map, I'm gonna click on the button, and then I'm gonna hit map. And now, see, I have both of these parameters, all right? And when you're in map mode, you can actually see the macro mapping ranges like you would if you were using MIDI Learn in Ableton Live, okay? So what I can do here is I can change the minimum. Let's try changing the minimum to one, and then the maximum to 127, okay? So now, when I go above one, what's actually gonna happen is it's gonna turn the effect on. You can see that, and see it's uh, not letting me click on this because the parameter's controlled by the macro. But, when I turn it above one, it's gonna turn on. Let's take a listen. There 
And we've got all of our bass back there. It's nice and smooth. It totally works. You can customize that range if you want so that maybe you need to go a little bit above zero or a little bit above one rather in order to get up there. But this is a great way to link up your effects to make sure that everything sounds awesome. And also, you know, effects are really important. It's important that they sound good when you're destroying your sound. But also in the world of hardware effects, especially with guitars, we have this word called true bypass. And that's a word that means when the effect is off, it's not going to change your sound. And you don't want that. You've worked hard on your productions or someone worked hard on the production. You want to really get the floor moving. You don't want to be shaving off bass when you're not using this high pass filter. So there we go. That's a lot of fun. This is Evan Sutton, also known as Astrolith. You can catch me at astrolith.net. Stay tuned for more tutorials. I hope you enjoyed this one. Catch you later. Welcome to DubSpot. We believe in providing you hands-on experience right away. Whether you're completely new to music and want to turn the sounds in your head into a musical reality, or you're an experienced artist looking to refine your skills and add new tools to your arsenal, we're ready to meet you at your level. For students of all ages, all levels, and all styles of music, DubSpot is here to help you achieve your goals. With course offerings both online wherever you are and at our school in the heart of New York City, we are ready to guide you through the next phase of your musical transformation. Whether you want to produce music, DJ or do both, you've come to the right place. Come explore DubSpot for yourself. Become a part of our community and make music.